Here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, I'm joined by my friends, my co-hosts, the boys. We've got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair, and what an exciting weekend. Uh, The LCS Finals. Uh, pretty crazy. Uh, again, just a, a really fun weekend. You know, the matches aren't long in itself, but I think for me, what's most exciting is all the stuff that's happening around it. I mean, just the vibes of being in an arena, um, all the like pre-show events, the cosplay, you know, uh, competition and just everything. It was so uh, crazy and uh, exciting because it's been a while since we've been in that type of atmosphere. So I had a lot of favorite moments, but I want to dive right in there. And, you know, because I know you guys were watching it. I want to know what your favorite part of the whole uh, finals event was, because like I said, there were so many fun things. Uh, I want to pick your brain. What, what was exciting for y'all? Mm, my favorite part was seeing the legends come back and just like the LCS legends. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about how much history there is in the LCS. It really looked like they leaned into it. The video was great for them. They did the top 10 list beforehand to build up hype. I think they did all the right setup you need for this. So hopefully they continue to speak about the history of this league and make sure people know who these people are because they deserve it. Yeah. I think for me, honestly, the most exciting thing was the fact that Kaori showed up and he played well for the most part and just shows that just there's more rookies who are looking to like get picked up and they can they can play at a level that's needed he came in first time on the lcs stage into almost the finals in front of a live audience and almost beat 100 thieves mm, that's yeah. that's no easy feat yeah yeah that was pretty crazy i was i was pretty impressed by his play um i am so I'm just impressed he didn't poop his pants honestly he didn't freak out <laughs> completely yeah <laughs> but uh yeah he did well uh, I mean, I just love that uh, 100 Thieves just is creating new records every uh, every finals. <laughs> it is part of like good and of bad the fastest finals. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a funny meme. Also, the uh, the post game interviews of the end of the uh, C9 games those mm. were um, those were pretty cool. Um, the record was, I think this was the second fastest mm-hmm. uh, finals, and then. Um, Oh my god, I'm like reading the Discord and getting distracted. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Distract so EG him. EG versus, versus 100 Thieves finals last split was the fastest. And then 100 Thieves TL when TL won was the third fastest. And I think the fourth fastest was when 100 Thieves beat TL. I think that's the order. Uh, or the last two are switched. But pretty much just all 100 Thieves <laughs> mostly losing and winning one final in the fastest finals of LCS history. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like that that probably doesn't bode well. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be known as the team that just, you know, gets eliminated very quickly uh, most yeah. of the time. So when I'm in the finals, it just doesn't sound like a fun moment. But uh yeah, I mean I I, I gotta agree with uh K- I think it's Cowrie, right? If I heard them say it right, Cowrie is how they pronounce it. I'm sure we're all gonna get get it messed up. But either way, like I, I am super impressed. Like, you know, I, I as I think about it now, like I guess the pressure was off EG because when you have like the replacement AD carry, like there's really no pressure on you, right? Like people are gonna assume that you're not gonna have a good chance of winning. So I think that actually may have helped them a little bit. Just play a little bit looser, uh, just play a little bit more free. Um, and what I did like is that well, maybe let me get your thoughts, Alistair. Like because we do know Danny's laning isn't the best. Uh, and here we had Kaori going with the Lucian Nami uh, a couple times. And uh, I just got to get your thoughts. What did you think of his laning? Like, did you, because I don't think this is something Danny could have pulled off as far as like a Lucian Nami, but what were your thoughts on, on his laning and maybe just him uh, overall? Maybe you can go a little bit in more in depth in, into his play. I mean, I, I think at least at the current moment, uh, Kaori is a step up. Uh, I 100% think he's... I, I don't know if he's overall a better player than Danny because we only saw him play five games, um, which you can take a lot of information from, but it's not a big enough sample size to tell if he's actually better or not. I think if they wanted to actually win the series, he, it was definitely the right play to put him in, uh, especially being able to pull off something like a Lucian Nami and opening up champ pool and making drafts much more... or much less cookie cutter like they have been. Uh, mm-hmm. Where they have to ban the two most broken AD carries and probably Seraphine, 
Um, that's that was a big deal uh, in the series, and especially like I said, like the Lucian Nami, um, even though it's getting removed for Worlds, mm-hmm. uh, still being able to pull it off is a pretty big deal, especially in a series like that. Especially when Hundred Thieves is going to randomly default to Senna TK, which I don't even think is that good anymore, personally. Yeah. Do you think uh, yep. Calorie stays in for Worlds? Um, yeah, that's that's what the announcement was. It was like, yeah, I, oh. I think there was an announcement saying that it was most likely going to be that. Oh, wow. I don't know okay, if there was an official that. announcement or just mm-hmm. like a tweet, but the, for the uh, extended future, for now, Calorie is, I think, in. Um, I don't think, yeah, Danny's coming back for Worlds. I, I think there is a chance that's always open. Like, he'll probably still go to like the different stages with EG, maybe. I don't know. But if Danny's just not there, like in plans and stuff, and he's just like not with the team leading into like Champions Q or boot camping or whatever they're doing. Yeah, I think it's just carry all the worlds. So So is there crazy. Like, is there some kind of like roster lock in thing that they have to do? Or is can he just can Danny come back at any any point? For worlds you have to announce the sub or sub or subs maybe two people i think uh-huh. it's either one or two and you must announce them before you go to worlds that's okay yeah you always have to announce your seven man roster before well they could uh, always just i'm a locking period i would assume they would just announce them anyways right it doesn't hurt them not to I, I can't imagine that he's okay. not going to be able to sub in whether okay. they do or not yeah i don't know but it's kind of yeah. up to where where is he at right now like does he even want to be a sub right because if mm. he doesn't want it then it could not happen but from the org side assuming Danny's fine with it, they're a hundred percent gonna bring him, right? Um it is weird to me that he they didn't put Cowrie on the sub roster for playoffs. They put a coach on there. Mm. Um so it was like some top laner or jungler or something like that. And then their one of their coaches was on there. And so I don't know what that was about, but I mean they had the emergency sub um which kudos to the league for caring about mental health. I do hope that they write a rule down so that there is at least like you know some clarity um, when this is allowed or not because you don't want teams abusing it in the future. Because mm-hmm. um, in this case, I think it's totally legitimate. But if hundred things had lost, they'd probably be a little salty. Where someone who wasn't on the sub roster just came out of nowhere, started playing Lucian, and started dumpstering them. Mm, yeah, um, they literally took two Lucian losses to figure out, hey, maybe mm, maybe this is a problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but also it's like it's kind of embarrassing to lose to a person who's just never played LCS subbing into <laughs> yeah. finals, right? So it, it kind of goes both ways, I think. I like, mean, you can be upset, still, you're you're kind of. I mean, the the Senna TK to me kind of. As I said I I personally don't think it's very good. I don't think it's been good ever really since the TK rework, just because it Tom Kench just kind of dead weight. He doesn't do anything until level six because it used to be good because he could just perm appeal Senna with a uh, devour on W. But now that since level six, I mean, he, I, I just don't really understand why you'd pick Tom Kench over like Cho'Gath or something that just like does something. Even, hey, like, are you saying this pressure. because it's like a response to the Lucian Nami, and that's why? Well, that that, that was what Hundred Thieves' response in, was. No, what I'm what I mean is like I think, I, I think the the Senna TK was more of a response to EG's play style of having a weak, like, early laning phase so you can get away with something that just, like, scales for free and then play towards topside because you have a better top laner. Possibly. Okay, so this was, like, in response to them having carry as a sub and them thinking that... Well, I'm, I'm saying I think they're so... practicing the Senna TK in preparation for Danny because Danny, his laning phase is notoriously really bad. Mm, yeah. I so see. if you pick okay. the Senna TK, you just get to free scale because, I mean... You're not worried about Danny, like bonking okay. your lane. So yeah, yeah, that is a bit. If that's you know, if that's the point of view that Hundred Thieves went, that is kind of a downside. Like you, EG and Hundred Thieves have both been in the playoffs the entire mm-hmm. tournament, right? And then you switch in a last minute player that you don't expect, and then your play style that you're planning for a specific player, like Danny the star player, now doesn't work as much. So yeah, I can kind of see that as being like, you know, that's kind of unfortunate for Hundred Thieves that that went that way, but um. Yeah, yeah. They still won the series, so I guess no harm, no foul. <laughs> yeah. now, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I still think the Sen TK was a bad pick in the Lucian right. yeah. Nami because it was counter. They didn't blind it. Yeah, but yeah, I, I can true. see that yeah. it's they they picked it because that's what they had been practicing. Obviously, I don't mm-hmm. have any <sighs> justification, like any quotes from anyone. But that that would because yeah, yeah, yeah. it is like a staple for the team. 
but it's just something no, I look it makes at sense feels... though like you have a free lane danny's a weak laner never really gets double kills or pressures yeah i mean i i, I can see it so yeah it's it, it should be a rule in the future i agree with kevin with that statement too like don't want you know if this happened in like all the MSI stuff that happened with like the ping and like all that last minute changes. I mean, that caused a lot of grief for everybody too. So yeah, that's hopefully true. Hopefully we can just get all these out, make a really mm -hmm. fine, clean rule book. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you what I would like to see is if, if EG incorporated this kind of six man roster for worlds where, you know, like you said, weak laning, uh, maybe you need somebody who's a little better at lane that can pull off. Well, I know Lucian Dami won't really be a thing, but that can pull off maybe better laning or, or more aggressive style carries early on Then maybe, maybe Cowrie is the fit, but you know, it'd be nice to have a, another option in that role. If Danny is unable to play uh certain champs, but I mean, I, I always like it when, when teams can pull uh, kind of the whole six man roster thing. I mean, realistically, I, I think the six man roster is a good idea. But I can't really see a world where Danny actually gets subbed in. Just because he already has a very hard time surviving lane mm. in NA. Um, what's going to happen when he goes against Eastern bot lanes, right? Yeah. Like, I, to be fair, and I've been saying this for a while, I think AD carries by far NA's best, best role, like domestically, without import, like not including the imports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Danny's really good, but his laning is very bad. And, I mean, he's just going to get absolutely smacked up by pretty much every LCK or LPL, or probably even LEC. And I don't even know if he'd do well against, like, PCS bot lane. I mean, yeah, I think he really struggled at MSI. <laughs> yeah. But we, we saw him at MSI, and they did struggle, but they also took a game off RNG and SKT. Like... Uh, at the end of the day, here's the problem with Kauri. Like, his character that he's only won games on in his career so far on stage, again, only two, so it's not like a big sample size either way, uh, was Lucian. And it's not going to be in the meta. And his Sivir was, frankly, underwhelming in mid late. Like, I think he played it fine. His laning was really good, actually. But I think his mid late was way worse than what Danny brings in. If you're going to go into Worlds and you have Danny, like, even usable, I'd rather have a win con than, like, I need to beat Viper, or or actually, I forget what group they're in. But I need to beat my lane opponent in early game. They're in the play. They're in play -ins, so yeah. yeah. I mean, so I, I need I to beat like, this high level team early game to win with my <laughs> Turkish sub player who's only been I, on stage once. I, I mean, I can agree with that. But my my counterpoint would be for the MSI example, the the meta was much more volatile, so it was much easier to snowball those games just as hard. And I feel like it's a lot easier to develop someone to get to the point where they're playing a lot better in the late game than than Dan fixing Danny's early game at this point because this has been a problem for the entire year. Yeah. So I, yeah. I think I think it'd be more worth it to put time into like trying to get Kauri to just like be able to play more consistently and play team fights better. I feel like that's just a better call in, in my personal opinion. I think I, I think I can agree with that take if EG can find a good like handful of ADCs in the new meta. And like in the world's meta is gonna be very different from the playoff meta. So if they can find Kauri can have a good amount of champions in there, then yeah, you, you do it for draft sake and you hope like he either pops off or the rest of the team can make do with the with the bonus draft changes. But I do also agree with the idea that like, yeah, I mean if EG ever gets to the wire and they're about to, they're a game or two from being eliminated and Danny is there and he has some scrim time and he is a sub, I think you just put him in because it's like, Kauri is very, you know, it's He's green. just no sample mm -hmm. size. So um, I, I think you, you look at both angles and um, the, I think they're best, like with the information that we have right now and the state that Danny is, I think the best option for them is to invest into Kauri and hope that his champion pool fits the world's meta. But I mean, it's just it's just a bummer, right? Like we would all rather see Danny, but uh, his mental state's not great, and his his champion pool has, just hasn't fit the meta literally since spring split. So um, yeah, we'll see it's how it goes. It's <laughs> gonna be pretty tough for them. Um, let's talk. About, do you guys want to talk about that series a little bit between them and Hundred Thieves? I mean, I thought yeah, the the, the interesting it. part uh, for me, obviously. Uh, at least for me, I don't know if it's obvious, but the Soraka pick at the end, uh, I know it had been shown in LEC and stuff, but uh, kind of, a, you know, it was kind of a curveball there at the end. You know, game five, 
Pulling out the Super Soraka. Champion, man. Dude, Super Champion, man. Dude, Super Champion, man. I, I will say, like, okay, Alistair, I know it may not be the hardest champion to play, but I did think as a Soraka player myself, his <laughs> I thought his position, who he's positioning, and the way he played Soraka, again, I, I you can play Soraka bad, believe it or not. And I felt like who he did a decent job, especially his silences. I think that's a really underrated a uh, tool that you know can really stop a lot of things. Obviously, it stopped a lot of engages uh, there uh, with Vulcan. I think flashing in and and not being able to get his uh his polymorph off because he gets silenced. Like that was such. Oh my god, that was so awkward. It was so awkward. So but awkward. I was like, dude, Soraka is broken. I was like, that's so bad. Like it sucks. But uh, anyways, that was just a hype moment for me. But what do you guys think about that series overall? So I went in person to see the series. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. In general, actually. Why didn't we even talk about this yet? Well, because we were talking hey, about Kaori first. Not yeah, that's about on me. So I'll bring it up now. That's true. It. Bring it up now, man. Like, that's hype, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a great time. It was a great weekend. Uh, I actually got, I'll show it on stream, but I don't know if you can see it. I got the sign, my t shirt signed by Bjergsen Oh, Pupo and, and yeah. Bjergsen. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but got, I see it. Um, my friend works for a company called IMC, and they sponsor Team Liquid. So Bwipo and Bjergsen went uh, to the company in person, and they got it signed for me. So I got that. Wow. I got some other cool merch and stuff. I like caught a little Ziggs bomb they were throwing into the crowd. Oh, nice. That's so, awesome, you, man. Did you play that? That was a great did weekend. You, like, why'd you pick Zillion Game 5, Bjergsen? <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, didn't get to talk, I didn't get to talk to them. Because <laughs> COVID policies means we can't visit oh, the company okay. and everything. They actually got to go to meet them in the suite seats, too. And they got to talk to Bjergsen. Him and another co coworker were talking to Bjergsen for a while. And then nice. after the Bjergsen left, the coworker was like, who was that? <laughs> uh, oh, no. Apparently, the coworker plays League, but doesn't follow pro at all. Oh, so they just like, came for, like when the tickets were given, it's kind of like when you go to like your company season tickets for basketball and you just don't follow the pro scene. Yeah. But you know how basketball works, right? This is generally yeah. what I was about. I'm like, you don't know Bjergsen, man? So. Well, wait a minute. So Did you visit any of like the, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, pros and legends like out there. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get to meet any of them. Uh, one of my friends walked into Boy Boy just in the hallway just between games because it was like Ooh. the hallways were just empty and Boy Boy was just huh. hanging out. So they took a picture, but I didn't get to catch them. So I'm unfortunately, surprised. I didn't get to meet them, but yeah. I'm surprised he was in the is. hallway, not on the stairs. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Making a new video. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for that series, uh, I'm honestly going to say that hundred these eg series being there in person was kind of boring what? uh oh, really? I, I i went through that series and the feeling in the crowd at least was like every game was inevitable like they it went to game five but there was almost never a back and forth it was like one game i think there was a goldie on one side and then a switch and then the game just slowly bled out and i think for me i almost fell asleep in, in game four like it was just like oh my God. <laughs> they're just slowly dying and they're not taking <laughs> fights and they're just seeding objectives. So personally, and this was kind of the consensus of talking to people, not even my friends, but like people around us, like we're just like, eh, this is this is kind of boring. I mean, it, the show, the production was great. I think that the casting, the analyst us and the casters did a great job, but I was like, good God, I, it was really boring in person. And I personally find in-person events to be more exciting than just at home. So mm -hmm. that was unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Bit of a downer take, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin went to see it and wasn't hype. I was at home and I was like, this is pretty hype. I, mean, I had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time on day two. I just, we haven't gotten yeah, there. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alistair, what about, what about you? What are your thoughts? Um, Honestly, it's kind of exactly what I expected. Like, I, I expected five game series, 100 Thieves to pull it out. Um, I mean, I'm kind of with Kevin. I mean, I feel like the games were kind of they weren't the most entertaining, which I mean, to be fair, the games aren't really meant to be entertaining. You're meant to win over entertain, of course. But yeah. um, like I said, I think for me, the most exciting thing was Kauri, like playing and playing well. Like that, that was the biggest thing for me personally. That's cool. You would yeah, say that though, because you're an ADC man. Well, he's, <laughs> it's, it's it's I it wouldn't matter what role. It's just like yeah, it's yeah. it's a rookie coming in, True. a very stressful comp or, uh, position, and playing well. I mean, let's just it yeah. doesn't it could it could be a mid laner, it could be a jungler. Yeah, I thought it was pretty exciting to see that, especially because you know it, it could have gone anyway, right? It could have also been a very boring three zero. Hundred thieves just 
giga stomped them. But uh, I mean, game one starting off with a hundred with an EG win that actually gave me a lot of hope for the series to actually be cool. Um, yeah, each game was stompy, so I think in that sense, like maybe it wasn't the most exciting, but the overall like picture of the game, the fact that you know EG was able to push so hard, uh, considering the situation, was was exciting and. Um, I did like the uh, Soraka pick as much as I kind of hate the champion. I thought it was it was a nice um, addition because yeah, EG's comp in game five was very low damage, so uh, the Soraka pick was had time to scale, and she's one of the most broken scaling champions of the game. I mean, she's right there. Like she provides different things, but similar things to like Yumi, Sona, Seraphine, all these stupidly strong scaling enchanters. So. Uh, she, she's just a bit of a different aspect, uh, different take on those uh, hyperscaling enchanters. And yeah, it outscales Lulu. Lulu provides a lot more early on, uh, provides that single target hard CC with the polymorph, but the actual, like, just flat how much shielding and healing you're getting from a champion, right? Lulu's going to get outscaled pretty hard. Um, so yeah, I thought it was cool. Um, I do think that the level of play was really inconsistent though it did feel like the team that was losing in each game just started being monkeys <laughs> just like playing worse and worse and kind of like doing some weird stuff um, i will say game five i think would have been a bit closer if it weren't for like just a few moments where um there was a rift herald fight and jojo was on ari and he goes in the ultis mm. onto the gwen yeah and I think he, he assumes that the Gwen's going to die, but there's Soraka and he barely lives. And he goes for a charm on uh, Azir, on the Ab on Abadage, to try to like follow up on the next play, get the ulti reset. But he doesn't. they don't kill the Gwen. He doesn't get an ulti reset, and they actually just lose the fight. And Hundred of these have super low health bars, and like that was like a really exciting fight. But it the way the comps uh, broke down, though, it kind of made it so that the rest of the game was pretty doomed um, because they lost that one fight. And then... Of course, you mentioned it right. Vulcan, he's trying to flash Polymorph in a in a later dragon fight. I think it's a soul fight, mm -hmm. and he flashes onto a silence, and he doesn't yes. get to do anything. He just flashes onto silence, and then Awkward. runs back, and he's like, "Shit, guys, I messed up." <laughs> and then yeah. uh, the rest of the fight is actually really, really close, and it's very clear that, like, even though I do think actually that EG played that last fight quite well, it was just a Soraka difference. Everybody was alive with such little health. That the healing and the extra cues that who he landed made it made a big difference. Um, I will say I am surprised watching who he plays Soraka and watching, I think it was LEC that played Soraka as well. Mm -hmm. Dude, who he just doesn't press the Q button. Like he he just holds that sucker for ages. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. He's just spamming W without landing Qs. And I do think that's <laughs> a little scary because you kind of need to land Q to heal someone without killing yourself. Um, but he just it didn't matter. It didn't he didn't care. It was fine um yeah, yeah but uh yeah it was fun series fun series yeah i want to add on to the you know i was watching that game five real closely and i think it was i don't know if it was that same fight uh where vulcan flashed in and, and got silenced um but jojo on ari there was a fight around dragon where uh he had used two of his dash dash ults uh to try to kill the soraka and he could have dashed forward to finish her off but instead he he uh dashed back and basically everyone got killed then uh, and i feel like oh. even though i think raka had oh. raka had already ulted uh and she got her pretty low but i feel like if he had dashed forward one more time and finished raka off he would have got a reset and i think maybe that fight goes you know again this is just you're saying i'm not saying like that was the bad play or anything but but watching it more closely i i kept i kept rewinding it and wondering like man i wonder if he killed that raka if then you know, now he can R back in and maybe finish someone else who's low and that yeah. fight turns because it was very close. So, you know, I, I, you know, it's something to think about that I was looking at. Also, adding on to the topic of JoJo, I think he played that series like a man possessed. Like four of those games, he was dipping Abadage so hard. Like we were just watching. We we're like, yeah. dude, what the hell is this? Like that game, he had three kills, solo kills on Akali. Even with like other people trying to stop him, I was like, "Bro, Diff is so big." Yeah. I felt so yeah. bad for him. Like five <laughs> game final, it's like it man, was really I mean, funny. To win this it was really funny too when uh, I think Abadagi stopped his teleport. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was about to bring that up. <laughs> he stopped, Abed, and then he, Abed, killed, Abed, he gets killed. 
Abadage oh, didn't even get solo killed. He just killed himself. <laughs> yeah, he like, did. Like twice in that game for no reason. That was yeah. awkward. Very, <laughs> that was very, very awkward. Very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I go ahead. Say yeah. for um, I think like talking about also just like some just the just the overall idea of like of hundred thieves. Like they did show that like yeah. Like someday is still a freaking monster, right? Like, oh yeah. We, we've been waiting for somebody to have like these counter picks. Like Fudge was able to bring out in the EG in the first EG series of like Fiora and Camille and stuff. Okay, now someday can too. And he actually played a really clean Fiora. And yeah, players like Impact who do not play those dueling champions well, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't play Fiora. He doesn't play Camille. His Jax is usually not very good. His Gwen usually isn't that good. He's more of like this juggernauty bruiser type uh, player who also plays tanks sometimes, right? And He's blinding Aatrox, and we've been saying for a while that blinding Aatrox isn't real because these other champions exist, but we just don't have it in NA. So it is cool that our two best teams in the end actually ended up being able to play the Fiora counter yeah. that is very popular in LPL. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do think that, man, it's, it's, a, it's crazy how... I, I think it's just crazy how these drafts kind of turned out too, where it's like, it, it's... Whoever was like uh, picking the tank was kind of getting crapped on. Uh, who was ever getting blinded top? Like that determined so much of the game in the series. Uh, and it wasn't until like that game five where it was like kind of a carry versus carry, where it was Gwen versus uh, GP. That yeah, it really felt like someday was just more useful uh, in the game with the Gwen. Um, so props to that guy. I mean, I really do think that someday made a, a big difference in making sure that he was dipping top and for sure winning, winning them the series. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Someday's got it, man. He's still doing his yeah. thing. I mean, it's the battle of the oldies. Someday an impact, you know. Yeah, <laughs> there there you go. Sword and shield. Sword and shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, let's talk a little bit about our champs, though. Cloud nine three zero. Uh, man, I just think Cloud nine is just getting better and better. Uh, I don't know. Like, I really like it that they're peaking right now because berserker is a monster and like i cannot wait to see him uh play in worlds and i'm just actually really happy with our number one seed representative i know groups isn't looking that great but we'll talk about that in a little bit but uh talk a little bit about c9 your thoughts on them uh again three zero just the longest game was 30 minutes. Like, again, we talk about it, records were broken. So uh, what are your thoughts on C9, our champs? I mean, I think they played at such a higher and higher level from game to game. Like, they started pretty weak um, in their series against CLG, where it went to game five. They looked a little shaky. Yeah. And from that, it looked like no one even had a chance, honestly. It felt like they were powering up, and it felt like, if anything, some of those teams were powering down. Like, EG was probably a little better in their first route and then if they had made it to finals they would have got absolutely crushed it might have been the fastest series then mm -hmm. 100 days um played a little better but like i mean see i just capped them so hard and i'll get into the rant later but actually i'll get into the rant now <laughs> yeah. like 100 thieves man it's like you I just know. know what they're gonna bring out yeah. and once, like they have flopped twice now like yes they made it to finals since tl got for it but when tl plays they're like wow i have no idea what's gonna happen 100 these boys just like you know what yeah. they're going to pick. Yeah. You know that there's not going to be a lot really of an X factor. And if they're outclassed, they're just going to get crushed. And so I think C9 plays super well. I think Berserker is an absolute beast. They also like smacked the 100 Thieves Soraka. Like we, we bigged up Soraka last game or yeah. for the last, last series, series. And I think yeah. it did do a lot of work. And then Lulu Zeri just like gapped them so hard that, well, okay, the whole team gapped them so hard. And yeah, that Soraka was. To play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To play into the the like it wasn't even like a real cannon flank it was just like nocturne turn off the lights and then cannon does a baby flank and it just completely destroyed them um so i think cloud nine is clear like it's really nice to have a strong rep going in sometimes we have years where it's like it's kind of close and so we're not really sure if our number one's like actually that strong and i think cloud nine's probably in a healthy group with them it looks really bad on paper we'll talk about it later but i think cloud nine is well suited uh well geared up and they look like they're on form so this is the meta for berserker there are some metas he might not look that amazing on we don't really know but this is definitely one of them that he looks good on so i'm very happy for it i'm just gonna say it why can we not find an answer to zillion Please, yeah. So, yeah. someone there ha there there is an answer because there's a reason it doesn't do very well internationally Internet, but why yeah. why can we not figure it out and it's 
everyone gets hyped over the Jensen Bjergsen Sicilian. I get so bored, man. I it's so boring watching that champion hit Q on a minion wave and it, and just run away with E. Um, other than that, it kind of felt like Hundred Thieves just didn't really know what to pick in a lot of these games. Why are you picking Alistar? The champ's not good. Yeah. He's he's probably the worst support in the game. If not, it might be Thresh. <laughs> I would rather have a Rel on my team. LeBlanc support, baby. <laughs> there it's, he is. it's probably better than Alistar. <laughs> Dang. To be completely honest. That he champ. really hates Alistar then. Dude, right, no, it's, it's I don't hate the champ. He's just bad. Yeah, he is yeah. like it's 15 seconds for both for his combo that does a combined like 120 damage and fully commits yeah. you and you just kind of get turned on. You're gonna get your most useless thing level one. So you're just going to get completely poked out, especially in a double ranged meta. It, it just, I don't know why you're picking that champ. And then, especially with a Zeri, Zeri is just, you're twice the champ when you're playing Zeri with an enchanter. Mm -hmm. Picking her with an engaged support is just not very good right now. Especially like after all the changes. It was, it was more acceptable in spring because Zeri was much more broken. Um, but now it just, especially against another enchanter, it's just not worth it. And then the Malphite pick, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe Mitchell can explain that one to me. But no, it's 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 like it's made for lane. It's an older pick counter pick into range tops and Kennen. But it's like it was more when Kennen was about like truly lane building, and you would build like double Dorn's blade and boots and stuff, and then Malphite could just sit there and tank it all because Kennen does lose to tanks. Like that's that's his worst matchup in terms of. I think pro play. I think in like solo queue and stuff, you can pick stuff like Aurelia and Camille and like jump on the cannon. But in pro play, tanks pick are picked into cannon all the time because you fall behind a little early and then, but you have Dorn Shield, you have second wind, and you build some uh, resistances and you can ignore cannon and you clear the wave before he has a chance to clear his wave, right? So you can just shove in the cannon over and over again. But um, it. It didn't seem good because it's double AP. Like, right? Like, Malphite is just not... You don't want Malphite against double AP champs. Um, and I don't think, like, the relatively safe laning phase that he provides is worth it. Um, to be fair, that very first dive uh, where they... Uh, in game one, where mm -hmm. they dove the Malphite... Uh, they three-man dove the Malphite on the wave. Somebody played that basically perfectly. He just didn't have enough damage, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, so... There was something there, but the rest, like, it's just a supportive champion. It's a supportive pick, right? It, it really lives or dies by whether his team can be alive and be around for when uh, Malphite engages. And you know what? Players have gotten a lot better at the game, too. Like, we're at a time where it's actually really easy to flash Malphite ult team. People just have good reactions. It's just Or Gale Force anymore. or Stopwatch. Yeah, Stopwatch, like, uh, just LeBlanc W, right? Like, people just Octane are Spell better. Shield. Proto Bell. better at the game. So um, there's a lot. I, I didn't. I didn't like the pick, right? I, I think Malphite like was just not the answer. If they were gonna pick a tank, uh, if they were gonna, they just should have gone with almost any other tank, right? I would have taken Mundo honestly over that stuff. Um, there's no engage, so you put maybe some other engage other other parts of the kit. Obviously, Orn was banned, right? But um, didn't think it was good. I also think, yeah, the Soraka was not great either. It is great into like the Lulu, but I do think like. Soraka just doesn't do great into AoE, right? So there's Kennen, uh, and then there's there's Zeri that are doing a bunch of AoE. I feel like Soraka really likes to have like long extended fights where people aren't getting bursted in one shot, so she can get a bunch of heals over and over again and run around and stuff and be be like a stupid ass ambulance. But people, they're just getting comboed and wamboed uh, in one shot, and then the uh, the Nocturnes turn off the lights. Pretty sick. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good draft by Cloud9. I think Cloud9 just has the greatest drafts yeah, it's now fun because of their champion pool yeah yeah it was definitely fun to see that come and i could hear the crowd cheering when they when the nocturne was locked up you know and they locked in yeah. i think did they lock in the cannon too like it was both of those picks right at the same time basically i think so and yeah. i just hear the crowd going oh because they know the combo that's coming interesting mm -hmm. stat berserker was in that series 23 1 and 24 he had a 47 his only TD. death was so avoidable too <laughs> yeah i know that's so <laughs> oh crazy Sven's Disgusting. well okay Sven's played yumi one game and lulu twice but he was 3 1 and 49 52 kda but berserker 10 cs uh average that whole series uh and 926 
DPM. Like it's that's just insane. That man is insane. And he was just I cannot wait. Like, I, you know, maybe he falls flat uh, against international ADCs, but I, I'm hype on this guy. And I'm, I'm really excited that he's on our side uh, this year. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's it's awesome to see that, man. Like the, this young talent the one piece that cloud nine did not like get a refund on you know what i mean like they got rid of ls they got rid of uh who was it summit summit <laughs> the, the mvp yeah. i totally forgot like yeah. now, now we have berserker and he's killing it so uh any yeah. thoughts on him or or uh you know that bot lane as a whole i think i uh. i think real, real sorry sorry kevin but real quick i thought it was funny too that Zven, when he was giving his interview and they were asking about support, all I could hear was Alistair. <laughs> Alistair laughing as Zven was like, support is easy. He's like, I mean, it's it's enchanters. It's so easy. But anyways, yeah. What do you think of Berserker in, in that bot lane? <laughs> yeah, so I thought Berserker in the bot lane is, I think he's the complete package. He, he, he always feels like, so his early game is usually good. He doesn't end too much, at least not into a team like 100 Thieves or EG. He did maybe die in season uh split one a bit but he had a terrible support so it was hard to tell if it was his fault mm -hmm. um i think that he's like the final boss in carry battles like he just he just does not die dude this guy is just always there like there are fights where i'm like wow that's a great engagement 100 things and then after all is said and done you just see like half health or above Sivir <laughs> yeah. just like in. wailing away yep. or zary and you're just like what how, how does he just like keep getting away with it he's just so good uh i don't know why they left up zero game one for him like he's proven to be good on that character it's mm -hmm. sad that it'll probably not be as powerful for worlds which is like uh, yeah i want yeah. to see berserker just destroy guma in a, in a match honestly um i think he's good i think he's probably better than the person he subbed he was picked over which is guma yushi i think guma yushi is probably was better at the time but like either Guma Yushi has regressed or Berserker's gotten better. And honestly, it's probably both because you don't really get yeah, that much better in NA. Like it's very rare that you get better in NA. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe this it's is just copium, both. but I think NA 80 carries are at such a level that we can get at least a decent read on him. I would agree. I mean, I think if I want to be honest, I think this is the best chance for Cloud9 meta wise just because mm. it's enchanters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's much harder to tell the difference between a really good support and a, and someone who's been playing support for four months, uh, yeah. and is playing <laughs> uh, the top twenty four teams globally. Um, because I, I think overall is pretty good for Cloud Nine. Because mm -hmm. I mean, obviously Zven isn't going to be as good as some supports there, but like the difference is not going to be as noticeable just because. I'm playing Lulu. Hooray. I'm Come on, talented. Alistair. Stop um, picking on my, my champs. Mm. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's skill. Very hard. Yeah, yeah, no, it's I mean he can kind of just I mean, especially like as like an uh, X eighty carry player, like he he definitely knows how to mm -hmm. win his lane a lot more and what what exactly he needs. So he can just kind of play enchanters and him and Berserker are gonna have a like pretty good like read on what they need to do uh, yeah. together. So I think this is going to be very good. As for the rest of the team, now it's a bit off topic, but I think the one I'm honestly most worried about is Fudge. Hmm. Just because he, he played well, for sure, but top lane's always the role that does not do well uh, internationally for North America. Um, Blabber International obviously isn't doesn't have a great track record. No um so that's that's a bit of a question mark as well but i don't know i, I i'm a little more worried about uh imp or fudge yeah okay. uh i i do think berserker is pretty legit he's pretty dope uh i think he's very good i feel like he just knows his limits very well he knows when to just go freaking crazy and ape shit, and he is just has very good mechanics very good spacing he just clicks really well um, but mm. I also think, you know, he he also just isn't in bad spots or places. Like, he just, if it's a bad fight, he's already gone. He's already doing something else. And I really like that. There is, oh, my God, so many times where FBI, it's like, the fight is over. It's pretty screwed, and he's just going to die with them. He's just going to die with the team. And I really do think when you're the mid laner in the 80s carry, and your job is to, like, when the fight's kind of settled, and, like, it's either won or lost, right, you really got to go pick up all the farm at the end you got to shove all the waves you got to take all the camps because you know you're the most you're the two most important champs to do that and 
Dude, that that was such a big difference, man. Like FBI is dying with his team and he's going in there when it's like it looks pretty freaking doomed. And Berserker is just never like that, right? Besides the one death where he was just getting CC'd under tower because he was really cocky and like Jensen died without ulting and stuff, right? Every other time it's like he's there when the fight is good and he's gone when the fight is not good. Um really just intelligent plays from him. I don't know, he's just a really smart kid. Um I, I also think that Berserker, you know, he's like he just has that feel where he hasn't had a truly bad game all year long. Has anybody, mm. like, can anyone remember an actual just terrible game from him all year long? I think every player has had a really bad game from him, but or for a really bad game this year. But Berserker, I mean, he makes a couple mistakes here and there, but otherwise every single game is pretty legit and solid. It's, like, never his problem when things go badly. And Damn it, when Mitchell. I think of, like... <laughs> he cursed why, why'd you say this the, the last person we said this about was Han Sama and look what happened yeah. Yeah, that was like last year cursed bro. I mean you were, we were saying, saying, last, saying we were saying this in spring last, split like, what do you mean last year Wait, last you know Han Sama he just you know he doesn't make any mistake or many mistakes he just plays the league really this year. He can't I don't think I've year. ever said that you guys are capping I no, <laughs> I, I'm talking I'm ta <laughs> it, it may not have been you it may have been Kevin it probably was Kevin but like point is we this has been said before and then Han Sama, I, I I don't know, fell off. I yeah. I don't know. Han Sama was looking sus all the way from like halfway through swing <laughs> swift. I don't know if I, if, Ber if Berserker <laughs> Berserker runs it at Worlds, we blame Mitchell. Yeah, all right, whatever. Curse. I'll take it. <laughs> There's no way, man. He's too I good. Think He's too Berserker good. Berserker has good. had bad games before in the last split, but they were. All, I mean, it's just so hard to figure out if it was just because of him or it's because mm. he also had Winsome or. Yeah, whoever was I, all i'm just gonna say is golden guardians have the right idea picking nocturne three games in a row and just tunneling on killing berserker that's just yeah. the right idea like <laughs> well yeah no well yeah really... when, when cloud nine's top lanes win trading yeah may as well yeah. attack the only person who's trying to win the game <laughs> oh no, yeah, seriously yeah. but like honestly when you look at this right they picked zillion and an enchanter that is the most stupid late game bullshit ever <laughs> an enchanter plus zillion is like so if you dumb. have a good adc it's like what this is just point and click stupidity. Like yeah. it's just, the guy doesn't die. The guy moves at a million miles per hour. I mean, it reminds me of like, you know, it's like a double lift comp, right? You have Bjergsen on Zillion, you have double lift on a crazy ADC and you have everybody else supporting that play style. Um, so, I mean, I think it's pretty cool that we have an ADC like this. I, I hope he does well at Worlds. I don't know. I don't believe in jinxes, right? We don't believe in jinxes, guys. It's fine. It's going to uh, be great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, go ahead. Was that, was that I, uh, okay? I, I mean, Zillion's a stupid champion. I do think the meta is a bit different, right? Like, the stuff that beats Zillion mid isn't really being played right now. It could be played still. So maybe Asian teams or other teams that C9 will run into will play the stuff that's good into Zillion, right? It's like heavy roaming. It's like stuff that can just completely zone him off CS, right? Like you really can't trade with Zillion at all. But it's gotten to the point where Zillion's, I think, like. When you see Jensen and Bjergsen play it, right, Jensen was kind of inting still. But it got to a point where if the team isn't that far behind, you just win the game. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It, if you get ahead on Zillion, you win the game. If you don't fall too far, far behind, you get to a point where it's, like, really hard to lose the game. I do think the Silas was one of the best picks because you ignore a Zillion. He can't hurt you. You can jump on him whenever you want. You can roam whenever you want. You can shove about the same as him, and you can steal the ulti. But it wasn't enough, so maybe another team that can play Silas comps better will do better with it. Um, but I do think, like, you know, Silas can only steal the ulti once, and Zillion, the ulti can get to, like, a 50, 60 second cooldown in the mid game. Not even the late game. It's, like, level 11, where it's, like, 60 seconds with a, with a decent amount of ability haste. So I, I still think it's pretty stupid and broken. My biggest fear, I said it a few weeks ago with Seraphine, is that an Asian team gets really good with Zillion and they just use it against us. Because I still think that C9 didn't even play it perfectly or anything like that. They were dying, getting caught, doing stupid shit, and still it wasn't even close at all to 100 Thieves. Yeah, so. I think, you know, the, the, the fact that it is kind of Enchanter meta is what makes Zillion even more nutty right now because yeah. it's it's like shield they, him exactly they each other you i know it, the adc together it's just ridiculous. and if you have <laughs> a if you have a uh carry like berserker who can literally just go crazy you keep that man alive uh, you're gonna win those fights and you know zillion i think may have not done well internationally because of the weak laning um 
But I think if it's paired with an enchanter, I think it might even warrant it, even if the laning is tough. Like, even if you get behind, because like you said, mid late game with that synergy between Zillion and, and whatever enchanter you have, it's going to be very hard to kill that carry that they're supporting, especially if you have the resources, like an actual good carry who can who can do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. So, And also, also, like, if we think back to when Bjergsen played Zillion and he mm-hmm. got completely dumpstered by set, right? It's because they blind pick Zillion, and then BDD yeah. actually countered yep. with set. I don't think you ever blind pick Zillion. I think it's almost always going to be later in the draft counter pick. So if you just play it within those pretenses, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I do think they did... Uh, blind it and then they got countered by Silas or something or maybe they I, I don't remember how that draft went down yeah they countered with Silas wasn't, wasn't good enough so that's where I would be worried right if C9 ever did blind Zillion and left Silas up and stuff that's then true. yeah maybe C9 can lose that draft but um, mm-hmm. otherwise if you late pick in stuff especially the, the eastern cool. Silas players my gosh those guys are nutty yeah. with that champ I, Abadoggy Silas is pretty sus though I'm not gonna yeah. lie like we that's saw what, JoJo yeah. Silas the day before and it was like twice as good like yes. his Silas JoJo Silas is so much better it's not even funny so yeah, yeah. and he, he's known <laughs> for that champ too so I mean it, it yeah. definitely shows the difference of how nutty that champ can be uh, when in the right hands, because that <laughs> that champ I think is busted uh, when played yeah. properly. Uh, but let's let's move on, uh, you know, to the group stage because after the 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 whole ceremony and all the interviews, which by the way, quick note, <laughs> the interviews were freaking hilarious. I loved how pretty much everyone was just talking crap, like everyone saying easy, Fudge is like I told you so. Uh, I think even Berserker said it was like too easy or something like that. Boring, like he said, he yeah. said it was boring, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude can barely speak English. And it's like, yeah, it's boring. <laughs> I was like, dang, man, what a <laughs> slam. But I love it, man. I, I hope they keep, you know, just that swag, that attitude. People were doubting them. I mean, I didn't think they were going to be that good, especially, you know, at this point. So good for them. Bring that attitude into worlds. Play like that. Like I want to see them uh, do well. But I had to note their their <laughs> their interviews because sometimes I'm just cracking up, man, when uh, they're being interviewed. Uh, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, shout, shout out to the the blabber interview. Oh uh, man, I thought yeah. it was cool. I, I like the crowd was like going MVP and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool for him because I think that's what happened to LeBron in that stadium. Uh, mm. Also, I believe is what people were saying. Um, so that's really awesome moment for blabber. Um, he gets a lot of crap, right? But he is like, with when it comes to who is currently playing, like you know, like Smithy, right? There's an argument, but he's just the best jungler NA has ever had, and he is homegrown, like first right now. And I think that's really awesome that he's, you know, he got to three zero in summer and put on a pretty awesome performance, and then get that respect from the crowd. I mean, good, good for him. I think, right? I think like, too, like he, he. You know, and this is what LS had said uh, after, you know, being there for just a little bit. He said one thing he learned about Blabber is that that dude really cares about the game. Like he, you could tell, like even Fudge was saying like this guy sometimes talks too much to the point where he's like annoying. But you could <laughs> see, and I, what I guess I could see like with the tears, like it, it just shows all the work that he's putting into it. It's like, man, when you, you feel validated at that moment when... You've put everything in it to the point where some people like get mad at you because you're too much, like you're too intense. And yet it it finally pays off and people are calling you MVP and all of that stuff. Like I could see all of that hard work just outpouring in emotion, like with those tears. That's what it felt like when he was crying. Like, man, it was like finally being valid. He couldn't even talk after that. And, you know, I'm just it was a, it was a happy moment. And. I'm I'm happy for him because he does go nuts sometimes. But look, you got Zillion and Enchanters, bro. It's fine. We don't Berserker's safe anyways. We'll just use everything on you, man. Just go in, hundred percent. Don't even worry about it. Uh, I <laughs> mean, Blabber is like this is his first live uh, finals that he won, I mm-hmm. believe. Uh, the other two championships he won were not uh, live. They were during mm-hmm. COVID, I think. And so this is his first live one, and he's been known for choking yep. on the big stage. And he said it too. And he did not. Yeah, he said it. Okay, mm-hmm. I, he he didn't choke at all. I mean, he made a couple of bad plays, but overall, most of his plays are pretty good, and yeah. he was very aggressive. Didn't make too many mechanical boo boos. So I think he's growing as a person, hopefully, uh, through that. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. I, I I I really am glad that he's NA at least, right? <laughs> like this yeah. is he went through scouting grounds and everything, grew up in our system. So I think Redemption. it's pretty awesome that you know Cloud Nine has stuck with him, and he's just stayed at the top of his game. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. No, nothing much else to say about him. Like, just just he's great player. Glad he's around. Happy he's moment nice. for him, man. Really happy for him. All right, let's look at these groups because, <laughs> I mean, I just don't know if there's ever going to be an easy group. But uh, real quickly, let's go to the group stage first, and then we can maybe talk about plans. But uh, group stage, group A, we have C9, T1, EDG. Group B, we have JDG, G2, and Damn One. Group C, we have Rogue, uh, Top Esports, and GAM. Uh, gigabytes marines and then group d we have gen g cfo and hundred thieves uh how do you like any of our groups i mean i off the, you know first glance um let's just start from the top right we let's go just go a, from the top yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess uh, yeah so as i alluded to earlier i think group a is probably the most reasonable one to get out of and i think that might be a hot take because some people will see another group later on but I think this is probably the easiest one to get out of. I forget what can be slotted in here. I believe it's Fanatic, Fanatic is the most likely, yeah. right? Because it's EU. Um, C9, I think if they had to play against a top Korean team, I think C9 probably would want to play against T1. Uh, in terms of just like they have... What's the, what is C9 strength? Their AD care. What's T1 like completely like not able to rely on at a high level, right? It's, it's Guma currently. So mm -hmm. this is the best draw for us in that sense. I also think that we'll probably lose to Viper I, unless he doesn't show up somehow. Like, that guy is better um, than pretty much every AD carry here, uh, depending on the meta. I, I think this is good for C9. I think we don't have an easy group, but, you know, it is inevitable that, like, one of the top, like, usually the Chinese teams, but one of the top teams is going to just randomly, like, not play that well in best of one. And C9 is usually on the positive receiving side of that. So... They can control their own destiny, and I think they can probably upset at least one game off of T1 and potentially go to tiebreaker. So, Yeah, I mean, if we're talk just talking about Group A, um, it looks bad, especially because uh, Cloud9's in a group that currently has two world champions uh, in it, which is a bit rough. Uh, especially because if you look at it's Fnatic, who technically is also a world champion uh from season <laughs> one so legally yes <laughs> that, does this does this mean that cloud nine wins worlds this year i mean that would be cool <laughs> i don't know I think um, <laughs> yeah that, that's that's my thoughts on group, group a i don't know yeah. i mean maybe maybe it'll be another situation like last year with tl where it's just a really stacked group and it just it got really close that yeah. that could be another that could be what happens here i i think it's going to be pretty close if uh cloud nine hey let's be honest right cloud nine is quite good but they if they want to get out of this group they still need to improve they need to get better like from now until the world starts so if they play it the way they play now i imagine they won't make it out of the group but if they do improve which is usually hopefully what teams hope for uh moving from the end of their regular season to playoffs and to worlds and stuff uh that they get better and yeah i think if they get a bit better and it always requires a bit of luck too, right? Group stage is always a bit RNG. So you have to hope that, right, T1 or EDG maybe underestimate them or maybe have a bad read on the meta, something like that. Then we can get out of groups. It's a tough group, right? I think uh, Kimmer in the Discord, he noted that uh, C9 could have technically drawn G2 and Gam or G2 and uh, the other team that's in 100 Thieves group, that I forget. Um, that would have just been a super free group. Um, yeah, and then they would have had either one Korean or one LPL team as their play-ins, and then they'd be playing for second place, maybe. Yeah, that would have been super free, but let's be honest, right? Like, every team has one Korean and one Chinese, almost, um, at this point. Mm -hmm. And they, it's just almost inevitable, like, that you're going to have to play them through them. I think they can do it, though. I do think that all the groups for NA are very hard, and this is maybe the easiest one. Only because the most recent time we've seen T1 and EDG is they got 3-0 stomped in their playoff regions. Um, EDG got destroyed by top esports 3-0, I think. Um, and then, um, T1 got 3-0 stomped by Gen G. So, you know, if we're going to have a hard Korean group and LPL group, this is maybe their best chance. We got two teams that just got destroyed recently. Um, but it's going to be a different meta. So, uh, I do think Fnatic, I mean, the way they looked in playoffs, they're, probably going to get out of plans and this is going to be what the group is and i do think mm -hmm. that when we compare it to 100 thieves group 
it's a bit weird, right? It's like everybody gets a free win versus everybody takes wins off each other. I do think that Fnatic, right, you are scared when you're playing directly against Fnatic. They will be able to contest Cloud9. But Fnatic has always been known in group stage and in quarterfinals to take games off of the top teams. That could help C9, right? That's the RNG part where Fnatic is going to randomly take a game off of T1 or EDG, and that could actually help C9. It also hurt us if we're fighting Fnatic for the spot. Um, so we just have to make sure we beat Fnatic as well. So I think that there is a chance that we make yeah. out of this group. Quick thing, EDG did 3-2 RNG, but it wasn't in playoffs. It was in regional finals. So right. last okay. time we saw them, they did beat RNG, which is not a pushover team, guys. They no, did just not. win mm -hmm. MSI in spring. Okay, so it was in playoffs, they got 3-0 by Top Esports. But yes. then in the yep. gauntlet, yep. okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, Last time what most are... people saw EDG because not a lot of people watch regionals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. What about uh, Group B? JDG, G2, and Damwon. Any thoughts on that? So yeah, I think this is realistically okay. where EG goes if they make it up. Yeah, if right? they make it. So... Yes, thank you for that. Uh, looks I think pretty good. Like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a good summary right there. Nice. Uh, yeah. El Bozo, I, I, don't, I don't know. Have fun. I I don't know if there's a group that can be harder. So there's always benefit to having the best team in the tournament in your group because it kind of just like sucks up all the wins. If they go 6-0, it means that second place is easier to fight for, relatively speaking. Uh, there yep. isn't... Like, JDD might be number one, but like they're not going to go 6-0 in this group. Absolutely not. And this, there's just too many like high cap. Like Don One doesn't isn't is like third or whatever going in, but it's Don One and it's at Worlds and it's still Showmaker, or yeah, Showmaker and Cannon and Naguri. Like even if they're like not at their best, I, I'm terrified. Uh, for not just like for our boys in EG, like even the other Western hope G2 just probably is gonna get smacked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They yeah, they already got smacked by Rogue in like almost <laughs> record time for EU. This is like not better, okay? So yeah. this might be the most cut and dry like first second some form of J to G down one, and it's like really unfortunate because G two and EG in in a slightly switched up group. Like if they were in the group with T one, for example, there is a chance they just upset and get in, right? I don't think there is one here. This is about as set as a group can be in my mind. I mean, I can see maybe a G2 upset, maybe, but I, I would not put money on it at mm -hmm. all. J just because G2 tends to have a world's power up. But yeah. I, again, I mean, like you said, this is this is JDG and Damwon. It's it's a pretty mini school for, like, chance. Yeah, uh, Lee Sin's getting buffs on 12.18. So, um, oh no, <laughs> we are not taking games off of Danwon or JDG. <laughs> Kanavi and Canyon are both insane Lee Sin players. And uh, I just, like, we're going to get, even if it's a bad draft, we're just going to get styled on. So, I do think that if we want to win this group or get out of this group, if EG wants to get out of this group, we have to just go undefeated. We have to just 2 0 G2. We've never beaten G2. <laughs> okay, so we have to beat G2 for <laughs> sure. And then we have to take a game off of either JDG or um, Dan won once and hopefully tiebreaker for second or something like that. Like, that is the narrowest margin that we get through. And that's off of, like, we had a solid play-ins. We learned a lot, right? We, we got a head start in the meta. Like, it, it just needs to be, like, we have a really good in the meta read on the meta, and we get lucky that the other two teams do not have the best read on the meta. Because when it comes to skill gap, when it comes to play style, and when it comes to the fact that our ADC is very new for EG, it's just it's just not a bright spot. So those are the narrowest margins we can get out, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, in true Worlds fashion, the LPL first seed almost never does well. <laughs> like, I oh, think yeah. in the yeah. history, what, IG was in first seed, they were like second. Uh, FPX were, was not first. Were, Wait, oh, were, they were first. FPX. No, FPX the year they won, they were first. FPX was first the year they won. Yes. EDG yes. was yeah. not. EDG was second. EDG was the year. first seed. Wait, really? EDG won. Yeah, EDG won world. I remember because I predicted them winning the whole. I remember. Yeah, EDG. Won oh yeah. Okay. They, FPX against... was considered the number one team coming in, even though they yeah. lost to EDG in the finals. You're right. Yeah, it was a weird year. Okay. Yep. Well, then I'll revise it a bit. There's always going to be an LPL team that like. Flops. I don't know which it will be, but JDG as an organization has not yet like made a solid push at Worlds. I think they might have made quarters or semis before. 
uh, that one they time where they were semis and lost to EDG, I believe. No, they no, lost no, no. to they lo Suning. That was the year before. They lost yep, to they lost to Suning, Suning, and then Suning went to the finals right. and lost to Domino. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah okay. I don't. I think that this org is playing at the highest level in LPL. Like they're the most complete team, sure, but that's what we say every time there's like a monster LPL team coming in and then inevitably they just like randomly have a terrible meta read or like their superstar mid laner just plays random crap that they didn't play during the regular season. So yep. <laughs> it, it could, it could be this one, honestly, um, because the expectations are so high whenever there's an LPL lock. Okay. And maybe not the first seed, but whoever we think is a lock, that's the hmm. team that just like randomly combusts. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, yep. group, group yep. C, uh, anything with them rogue, Top esports, Gigabyte, Marines. I mean, we're not. Uh, and one. likely RNG. And no, likely RNG. RNG. Could be, no, L uh, L LCK comes here because LPL is yeah, already RNG. in Group C. Oh, right. RNG yeah. has. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So DRX. Yeah. DRX. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah, have fun, this, Rogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, a, a good one. Though, I mean, but... maybe DRX chokes, but. DRX is pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. I, I have is quite quite bad. I'll be honest. I haven't watched a lot of LCK recently, so I I don't actually know how good DRX is. But yeah. I mean, honestly, this isn't a terrible group. Maybe Rogue can make it out uh, if DRX is playing bad. I I think this is one of those groups where top esports maybe six O's. <laughs> Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Jackie mm -hmm. Love maybe will give one game over. Um, okay, so they're gonna go it's... one and five according to Kevin. <laughs> 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 um yeah but i do think this is actually legit like this is real for rogue i think that they can this is the year that they can actually make it out like they actually got the first seed and the first an actual decent group for them um drx who's likely going to slot in is not going to be that amazing they are super inconsistent and have very basic drafts they just play meta like they don't have to throw any surprises or anything Deft is definitely on a downturn. He's still their best player, right? But he's that's it. He's their best player, and he's not like at his, it's not peak Deft or anything. Um, I will say Rogue. I mean, the way they beat G two, it did kind of feel like G two just didn't show up. So that is a bit nervous. Uh, but I thought Rogue played really well. Just a little tangent. I'm sorry, I have to do this. But Malray on Rogue, he plays Phase Rush J four inspired. He played Phase Rush J four in his series. I called the phase rush J4 before playoffs started. I am happy <laughs> it's being played. Uh, and I'm happy Lethal Tempo is being played when you want more damage on J4. Uh, didn't they, Conqueror, didn't, uh, didn't they lose route. both didn't they lose both of those games though? I'm just kidding. Inspired lost. I think inspired lost. Yeah. I I think inspired lost because uh, I remember when I saw the roots, I was like, "Ooh, Mitchell's going to be looking at that." And then it lost. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, will Mitchell mention yeah. that?" <laughs> like, I'm not sure. yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's that, what matters. yeah he, he did lose that uh one i mean yeah um, i saw it though i did see what what you know you were talking about there like it is kind of like you can kind of feather in and out and stuff but uh yeah you go in and out it's when you have low yeah. cooldowns right because exactly. honestly yeah. j4 you do not want to just stay there and hit people mm -hmm. you don't do much you're you'll die freaking yeah you die yeah. and you'll just give over death dance or lethal tempo stacks or try but you or whatever you did stuff. mention it and and it is yeah. it is happening so uh, it, it's, it's legit cool. i do think that lethal tempo right if you want early game damage and power or if you want dueling power lethal tempo is the best one because mm -hmm. conqueror just it's it's like it takes so long to stack and once you have it stacked on conqueror on j4 i mean you got nothing you just auto attack there's no you're not making use of the conqueror even if you are able to stack it which you can't so i do think yeah. phase rush is what's up i do think lethal tempo is what's up I just also think that the champion is just not that great, though. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make it work, you can make it work. I still think, right, like JJ on EDG, right, he, he won Worlds on J4. He's still going to play it because the champ is baseline kit is still quite good. But, I mean, mm -hmm. all the other champs in the meta have a very fun time in J4 right now. But they're getting all nerfed. Right. So who knows? Maybe J4 is actually more of a staple. So yeah, that was my little and then, tangent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My take on Group C, this is the only group that's like reasonably easy to get out of like yeah rogue is the first seed, and you, they did get top sure but like i mean the second seed is pretty wide like it, it, a korean team has to show up here right this is this is just how terrible the system is and if the system is you always get an lpl and lck team this is probably the best mix you can have right one that probably won't lose a game to the lck team so they can't like make some weird situation for you 
And then all you have to do is win one minimum game against DRX, which is very doable. DRX has players like Kinkin and Pioshek. Pioshek could be a god, but like he's a god like 30% of the year. So like we just don't know when that will be, and we don't know what meta that will be. But, I mean, he hasn't shown it that much. So uh, this is like the best option they have. Rogue looked good in the finals. Like they looked really good. They finally got it together. This is the momentum they need. I will say it is terrifying if Gigabyte Marines gets their visa. This is like EU's kryptonite. Luckily, G2 didn't win that finals, but like we don't know what Rogue <laughs> versus Vietnam looks like. We don't know what any European look versus Vietnam looks like besides G2 because this is so long, right? Back yeah, when Gigabyte and G2 were just clashing, that was like every tournament they were hitting each other, right? And <laughs> we haven't actually seen the rest of the matchup. I hope it's not an EU problem. I hope it's a G2 problem. But like yeah. this team could be terrifying. Saigon Buffalo was like kind of strong for a second place team filling in for a first place team in MSI. Uh, Saigon so Saigon Buffalo, Gigabyte Marines, Machi, all of these teams have actually been like legitimately competitive. So mm -hmm. yeah. you can't you can't slack on them. Um, yeah, I do they think though it's hard to give. <laughs> yeah, they could maybe they could be DRX and like help Rogue out like that. I actually would not be surprised. I do think though it's hard to give Vietnam much credit right now because. Uh, we okay, well, I actually, yeah, they haven't been around very much recently. So it's like, what are their players looking like on an international stage? Like, even mm -hmm. looking at their domestic games, right? It's like the level of play there is so weird where their top two teams are usually just miles and miles ahead of the rest of the teams. And it's just really hard to make any judgments at all, right? Because that could either mean that that team is really, really good and is going to continue to do well, or that they, their level, the level at domestically was just too low that it doesn't even matter and they don't make any noise at all so it's gonna be just a coin toss really whether Marines <laughs> does anything uh i do think it does help out rogue though because like rogue like yeah you just still have to beat gigabyte marines too right but if they're actually going to try and take games off the other asian teams then that's just good for rogue and um i kind of want rogue to win i mean i don't know i i actually really like the fact that they got malrang who's this guy who like I think he went like 0 and 18 on Jin Air or some Korean they were team. One and 35, I believe, across two splits when it was the Jin Air just double 10th place. Oh meme. my God! So yeah, Malrang has had a really rough career, and I like that he is making a comeback because, I mean, I just love that he plays J4 <laughs> and he has That's all the cool rooms. That's what it so was. Oh, I really want gotcha. him to succeed. Okay. I love an underdog story. I love a comeback story. And I love that he's not afraid to pull out some weird tech. Uh, so <laughs> I, I hope Rick does well. Yeah. Yeah. Extra especially facts, he was yeah. the understudy for um, Canyon. He was the sub oh, on Dama. Oh, so, okay. Nice. A little mini Canyon. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Let's go to, to go, let's go to group D. <laughs> Gen G, CFO, 100 Thieves. Let's, do our boys have a chance yeah. here? Yep. And RNG. RNG fills up the last slot. Yeah, RNG. Oh, yeah. RNG. Yeah. Uh, Gen G, RNG. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure. Gen G might is one of the favorites to win the entire thing. Yep. And I mean RNG. So is RNG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean I think this is a fairly fairly solid third place for Hundred Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> Once again. Unless yeah. DRX doesn't make it out of groups and they get slotted into oh uh, my. unless they get slotted into uh groups. If, if, uh, yeah, yeah. RNG could maybe no, RNG can never no. be slotted into Group C. Never, never ever. Um, it would just be whoever yeah. beats, whoever upsets DRX would get Group C. Well, if if both if Fnatic, Mad Lions, RNG, and EG make it out, Hundred Thieves goes into Group C. No, Hundred Thieves, 100 Thieves can't isn't in a group. They're already in. They're locked. Oh, sorry, uh, EG. I mean, sorry. EG could go to Group C theoretically. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's true. No, they they would have they would have to if uh, both yeah. EU teams yeah. and RNG make it out. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. Uh, EG, <laughs> I think if they they do in that weird scenario where they do put it go into Group C, they have a real chance actually. Uh, I think EG, how how crazy would it be? Inspired that would be nuts. Broke out. That would be. Oh sick. man. The whole team yeah, out. Man. So I and would knock out Rogue. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They knock out Rogue. Oh my god, that'd be cool. And justice for uh, Han Sama too for uh, getting replaced. Um, mm. So I think that that would be cool. Uh, but for yeah. Group D though. Yeah, 100 Thieves is pretty screwed, man. Like, when you watch, <laughs> yeah. when we look at how they play and stuff, and they are just not an explosive, bombastic team, they are a very just standard, play by the book, pretty chill early games, and just having solid mid game team fighting, right? Like, I just kind of get totally bulldozed by Gen G and RNG. I don't think it's going to be close. 
Um, I would have had some faith if FBI actually had a solid performance in playoffs. But, dude, his finals games were so bad, man. I like, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, FBI had a really bad finals. So I just don't have faith in the 100 Thieves right now. They would have to really kick it up a notch for me to think that they could maybe even take a game off, right? I, I think they can because they took a game off of a top esports last year. But it is a hard sell, man. It's like, I don't know. It This one is only considered easier i think than group uh b with eg because they're gonna get free wins against the other minor region team which i have already forgotten again um the flying so oysters <laughs> they'll get third instead of eg getting fourth <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah i mean i'll add in like this is the worst group for an na team like 100 thieves or for 100 thieves specifically because Genji of 100 Thieves are like, or a Genji and RNG are like the paragons of like, oh, you want to play too late? Oh, all right, man. Like, mm, we'll yeah. destroy you early and we'll destroy you late. Like, mm -hmm. RNG is probably one of the best team fighting teams out there, even though they did, you know, have some like stumbles and playoffs. Against, the, we saw them at MSI against the level of competition that the other regionals provide besides LCK. Like, you do not want to match into RNG. RNG historically, they don't do super well in bracket play, sure, but in groups, like they they actually destroyed Gen G historically. I think this org has like smacked Gen G down time over time and Samsung's. Like they always, it was always like RNG and Samsung or RNG and Gen G just like randomly get a group together. And here we go again. Honestly, this might be the worst group for Gen G to be in. Uh, for this or uh, top, I think would be the highest chance of an upset for LPL to beat Gen G. And so. Yeah, the, the, the top two are basically a lock. Like, I don't know where it'll be. RNG is like 30% likely to get second or first. And Flying Oyster might just randomly beat 100 Thieves too. Like, we might just have yeah. a Machi situation again where the NA first seed does beat Gen G once, or the NA second seed in this case, beats Gen G once and then loses to Flying Oysters and doesn't even get a tiebreaker. And it's just going to be sad. Honestly, like, we should not s sleep on PCS because when was the last time a team not named like uh what, what, psg talent or like j star or like whatever j team or whatever they're called like one of those psg psg uh variants just did not show up this time this is like a whole new team the only person i recognize on flying oyster is mission and everyone else is new so like the fact that this team got to the finals and won is absurd uh so they could they could be a threat i mean they won't win there's no way I they mean, will beat the other top two but they could be a threat to be fair NA took two of PSG's talents players. So true. We have River, yeah. maybe but PSG River talent wasn't Maple. top PSG's talent it wasn't top two. The finals was beyond. No, mm. I know that's what I'm saying. They're two oh, probably their two mm. best players got taken by NA. So that that, pro that oh, likely has something yeah, to do okay. with it. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I mean I I haven't slept on PSG since uh what was it, twenty nineteen MSI, I believe. Maybe or so I think it's twenty twenty MSI where they placed top four. Mm. Uh, wherever yeah, Crabber did. memes yeah. started. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah so I mean, nice. I I think I, I'm actually kind of interested in seeing this team. I mean, realistically, really only against 100 Thieves, because I think that's probably going to be the only competitive game, but I mean, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of cool. River did give an interview uh, after he was eliminated, and he said that, yeah, NA is actually significantly more competitive than uh, his his uh, his home region was. So that was kind of a cool insight to see because, you know, he was at the top of his home region for years. And then he comes mm -hmm. to NA and he, he gives the proper respect, right? He ends, uh, he gets uh, 3 2 in playoffs, and he, yeah, he gives the proper respect and says that NA is actually quite a difficult region. Like, you can't just come in and retire, right? So mm -hmm. I do I, I think that we can hopefully have enough pride. We're the fourth best major region. We are above the minor regions. <laughs> Come on, let's go hundred thieves. You can make third in this group. Uh, maybe we can take a game off. Um, yeah, but uh, that's pretty. I, I, it's looking like it's just Cloud Nine has a chance to make it out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll slim. put an asterisk on that though because it, it, we are more competitive. We've always been more competitive than LMS, but that's because LMS has been in like a top two, top three at most team. Uh, region, region, and like they've been losing talent year over year forever, right? Uh, NA, even when they were losing to Flash Wolves, which, which were better than NA first seeds, probably historically more often than not, uh, NA just had at least three teams that were like at least good enough, right? And even in recent times, I think NA was almost better than EU. Like we NA went three, 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 three and two, year. four, right? 
Oh, we were and better it, last year. You're right. Yeah, yeah, we were. Our record was better last year. Yeah. yeah. So like, we're definitely a competitive region. We have way more. Like, we have four or five worlds contenders that are not worlds contenders. Like contenders at the major region level. We're definitely not worlds contenders. <laughs> like, we wow. Are, we are group yeah. stage contenders. <laughs> we, we will be contending, and we will be at contenders. worlds. <laughs> We are second place in group stage contenders. I like that. I we like have that. five airport contenders. <laughs> we won't need it. Yeah. We won't need it. Five Uber, Uber contenders. <laughs> the truck meta, baby. We're bringing Heck out the yeah. Uber meta instead. Yes. Uber yeah. XL, baby. All right. Let's, uh, let's move on real quickly because we still got to talk about the meta uh, because the patch. But uh, real quickly, is there anything you guys want to say about like the plane stage groups? Let me just, for our listeners... Uh, list out both groups really quickly. So group A, we have uh, Fnatic, BYG, uh, DFM, uh, EG, Loud, and what is it? Chiefs Esports Club. Uh, group B, we have DRX, Royal Never Give Up, Saigon Buffalo, Mad Lions, Istanbul, Wildcats, and Isaris. I think is how you say it. Uh, any, and you guys want to mention any specific team or any thoughts yeah, on those groups? This has probably been talked about on other talk shows, but like, wh- why are DRX and RNG just like the same value as Fnatic and EG. Like, excuse me, mm. why are why why are the pool systems in such a way that these two show up in the same pool? I really think they should literally just be the pool headers, right? And then everything else is just seated below it because this is absurd for the people. Um, if I remember how plans work, there's like cross group play and stuff, so it's not like uber cursed, but like it's cursed enough where you're like you're just fighting for third in Group B. Yeah. Well, what is that? Uh, so. That's just my rant. I, I think that there's such a huge difference in the power levels between these groups. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to point out is that Group A will have a reasonable chance of like uh, the PCS team or maybe even Destination Focus Me just getting the second seed. Like that's what happened before. C9 literally lost to DFM or no. C9 has definitely lost to DFM, but like NA has lost to DFM before in the play in. So. It could happen, and then they'll get the reward of playing against like RNG or something or DRX. So, I I I hate the way the play and seating work, but I do like that they made it into two groups. I think that is healthier yeah. than what it was before, which was like three or four. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this is pretty. I think the I mean I think the whole world's format, the way it's set up, is pretty bad, especially with four seeds from like especially four seeds from three regions. I mean, what's even the point, right? Like, what's not to disrespect the minor regions, but like, what, what's even the point of inviting them at this point? You're, oh yeah, we're gonna have four Korean, four Chinese, and four European teams. Uh, yeah, have fun fighting for that one spot in that one group. Right, that's just lame. I I don't like that. It should just go back to three at most, uh, like it used to be. Um, but I mean the like I was saying, the possibility of DRX not making out over Mad Lions, though. I mean, I wouldn't. Assuming Mad Lions has to, um, you know, win a uh, best of three to make it out of uh, play-ins, wouldn't bank on that. Uh, so that's the worry. Yeah. But that that is a <laughs> that that is really possible. So, though so again, I mean, like Kevin was saying, don't sleep on DFM. They're they're very good. But Group B, I mean, they're. I, there's a lot of potential for upsets here. You get DRX not making it out. Uh, obviously, you get Mad Lions to be the only major region um, to not make it out of play-ins before. There's a possibility that just happens again. <laughs> um, so I, I feel really bad for the org if that's the case. And then, yeah. I mean, even <laughs> Sa- Saigon Buffalo probably. I I mean, I haven't watched a lot of VCS, but that's that's not a pushover, uh, and that. That, they're going to make that group a lot more interesting. Group A, I mean, I I think it's pretty clear that Fnatic and EG making it out, knock on wood. But may, maybe DFM does something, but I wouldn't. I, I'd, I'd say it's pretty clear for Group A. Group B, honestly, there's four teams that could make it out. Mm. Well, there, uh, there's, sorry, I... there's R and G and then three teams that could make it out. Yeah, I I do think DRX, as much as I was clowning on them earlier, they are at a high enough level where I don't think they're going to drop any game to but to but to RNG. Um, I, I don't think don't so think either, that, but... Yeah, there is a chance, but I don't think so. I do think that um, there is a chance, right, when we get to the best ofs and there's cross-play, right, and let's say, like, an EG or a Fnatic or a DRX, they do mess up, right? 
and they are put into that. I think it's the you 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 do first gets out automatically, and you do second versus third, right? Cross uh, best of fives. I think um, it's I, I think it's first is auto out, and then three yeah. and four play a best of three against each other, and then uh, third, and then the winner of that series plays the second seed from the other bracket. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Yeah, so if that's how that works, there is still some very sus situations. If we're talking from the perspective of NA, and we like fall down, and we let's let's say we because it's best of ones, right? We can just mess up randomly. We can just make a just have a really bad level one or something stupid, right? Have a bad read on the meta for your first game, and you lose it. Like, EG can actually not make it out <laughs> of uh, of, of uh, plans because because it is so wonky. Because you could, because like if you mess up, but then also like let's say DRX or RNG mess up, you could just be randomly playing a best of five with one of those teams to make it out of plans. That is just doomer scenario for us, um, for EG. So I don't like <laughs> I don't like the format at all. I uh, Jat, go ahead and watch the JLXP. He had actually a much more in depth rundown of what he thinks is better and what was wrong with the uh, of this current format. I don't like it at all. I think that. If you want to have these minor regions and play-ins, then the focus should really be on them. And it does feel like the focus is just on, let's just get some free wins for our LPL and LCK team. Yeah. Uh, hype them up uh, a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, just leading into like the entire world's format playoffs i think everybody is sick of it this year everybody yeah I, we, we mentioned this before like i think it's you know it's not that they're like worse off that we don't want to see them like i want to see them play each other because then at least it becomes better you know better matches to watch honestly you don't want to see like a a really top level team you know playing a really like where there's the level disparity is so huge that it's just not entertaining like nobody wants to see a stomp that bad it's not fun you know what i mean yeah. and so like if there was some kind of you know just way there could be just a mini play-ins with those minor regions like i think i'd be up for that because then we would you know actually just get to see uh them play each other and i think it'd be a little more hype you know what i mean plus you could yeah. develop and rivalries it, between those those regions which would be pretty cool yeah i mean yeah. especially because like if, if you look at it right now there's 24 teams that go to worlds 15 of them are major regions mm -hmm. yeah it's like, that's a, that's a lot like that's that's just lame yeah like, if you did three each that's 12 that's i mean that's half of the teams but you're not filling up every group with a major region yeah i i, but, I do think that if you're the perspective of a viewer though right like and you're not kind of thinking about the overall health of league of legends in general like you just want to see major region versus major region every single mm -hmm. game yeah. And so maybe Riot is leaning into that. I mean, obviously they're leaning into that because <laughs> um, I kind of get that, right? Like I have never considered a minor region capable, like they're going to actually win the trophy, right? Right. And I do think like the, what makes NA and EU interesting is like we're not favored to win the trophy, but it's not like we get literally curb stomped every single time we play a top major region. That's why it's interesting. These other regions, though, they do just kind of get curb stomped, and the close games are against us, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes they have a couple. So I do think, like, from like just a we're the equalizer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. We're in the middle, right? We make the minor regions. We give the minor regions reason yeah, to exist. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it begs the question, like, what, what's even? If, to me, like, it's point. getting to the point of like, what's even the point of having the minor regions in the same tournament? Why not just have major region worlds and minor region worlds? Right? And yeah, like, I think that, that, that's that, the real that's, thing too. Yeah, like it just it just kind of feels like pointless to have them if like seventy, almost seventy percent of the tournament is four regions. And, and like, and yeah, the those are the best is, regions. But the reason is because well, it's a game of League of Legends, and the game is equal at the start of the game. Like everybody's playing the exact same game when you log in, so there is always a chance that a minor region can make the climb. That's why they're in the tournament is because you have an opportunity to win the whole thing because you're in the tournament. No, I, I completely agree. With history and with like how viewers sort of see the game, that's never happened. So we automatically just assume it. And I, I it's a valid point. I, I, I think that like, why are they here, right? They have never really gotten that far since Flash Wolves. And um, I, I just I mean, think PSG, it's up to you what do people I mean, want. I, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not against the minor regions being there at all. I, I love having them there, but I, I'm just... It, to me, it just feels really, 
it feels wrong just to like stack like because at least before there was a chance that there's more of a chance now it just feels like the deck is stacked against them yeah it, to the, well, it, like that, yeah, that that's kind of my worry where it just it just like it doesn't feel like there's much point in them participating because like okay so you're gonna you can fight to make it out of groups which is, I mean, before, because previously play-ins was essentially like a minor region worlds, really. And then you get out, you get to groups, if you're the best of that. And then that that's that's where you can start the underdog story. But if you're starting the underdog story, like, with the deck completely stacked against you already, and you're playing against the MSI champions in group stage, like, yeah. what's the Nar what, what's Narratively, the point? Narratively, it, it makes more sense to have a progressive level of difficulty, but then you start off playing against RNG. So I I, I get that, yeah. It, it's, it I mean, that, that's that's just, like, a current example. Obviously, you're not going to play against the MSI champions every time in in a play-in stage, right? But I, I just feel yeah. like it, it's not as interesting to me <laughs> when you're just, like, expecting them. It's like, oh, yeah, so you, you know, you have to play against uh, the MSI champions, uh, to have a chance at playing against the uh, LCK champions. Good luck. It, it just it it just it gets kind of boring to me, honestly. I'd rather see like so, it reworked some way or just reverted back to three seeds from each region. But that's my personal opinion. I don't think it's boring at all. We had a mini worlds for wildcard teams. It was called the International Wildcard Tournament. No one watched that. It's not worth producing. It's not worth hosting. And even the people who went to participate probably didn't feel that great about it because it just didn't have any prestige to it. You were the international wildcard uh, champion. You got out, and then you went to Worlds, and then you got destroyed. It's like, okay. Uh, there's just no finality to it. And this is the same reason, like, why do the Olympics, like, have all these randos come in, right? So you can have stories where, like, some some other country you know does actually win even though the favorites are always the us and china and russia depending on the event right it, it's super exciting you get the viewership of brazil to watch like a random kaboom beat alliance or a and x get out of groups right it has happened dfm's beaten like c9 has beaten some groups uh some teams too the yeah, question that, is like will they win when it was Absolutely. three teams from each major region though not when it was four well, sure, but right I now it's that, four, four, three, point. three. It's not that much worse. Like there well, should be a reward for being a good region. No, it, I, I, keep... I get that. I'm just saying, like we're we're getting, we're let's, almost uh, getting let's... three yeah. or f three of the four groups are pretty much just the same thing. Is like kind of my is is my argument here. But it, anyways, I think we I think we beat this. It could beat this dog to be death. better. It yeah. could be better. We don't like it exactly. And that's uh, that's kind of how do better, Riot. Do better. Do better. <laughs> Do yeah. better. Give me more free stuff. I want some more skins, man. And then they did some stuff with refunding on the essence since I don't know. There's mythic essence stuff where it's like you don't get as much. I give me more free stuff, Riot. I want more yeah. drops. I'm watching on the low esports and I get no drops. What's up with that, huh? <laughs> uh, about the all real right. stuff here. These are the real problems. Patch notes. Okay, for yeah, let's let's talk patch <laughs> notes because. Uh, <laughs> Look, I think we could always talk like 10 hours on format changes on every single uh, split, uh, playoffs, whatever it is. There's always going to be better format cha changes. But we do want to talk about the, the patch because there's some changes and this is the world's patch. So, uh, you know, give me your thoughts on, you know, there's some big hitters here, you know, with Callista, uh, Lee Sin. I mean, Thresh, I don't know if that's enough of a buff for, for him to possibly come back. Um, Lulu. Uh, getting some nerves. So, anyways, you know, talk about some of these these changes and and if you think it's really gonna impact what we're seeing so far. Where yeah. are the for viewers? Nerves? Yeah. So for viewers, quickly, uh, Ash, Thresh, Lisa, Nasus, Buff, MF, Callista, Hecarim, Red Kane, Lulu, Nocturne, Nerf, and the ones I think matter. Uh, Lisa and Buff matters. <laughs> Dude, people will take any excuse to play that damn character. So, Lisa got. Six more health growth per level, and his W vamp went from 5% to 23% to 5 to 27 It's not major, honestly, but it's enough. He will be more tanky, and it's enough for like people like Closer to play it. He's already playing it, so why wouldn't you, right, with a buff? There will be other some Koreans and Chinese players who will also just pick it when it makes sense. It's not going to be pick ban, guys. And then besides that, Nasus is wither went from fifty slow to seventy five, and our uh, his R cool down hell, went from <laughs> his R cooldown went from one twenty to one ten to ninety. Like it used to be flat one twenty across the board. Uh, you know, if we were in an LS world, <laughs> the Nasus support would definitely be played now. Yeah, we'd that be is having a Nasus huge support buff. into Callista and like shit every game. Oh yeah. my god, 
No. I'll leave my combo at that. I, I would love to see NASA support. I'll get sick of it no. fast, but Please. I would love I don't want to see it. No. <laughs> so cancer, Kevin. Kevin, stop. Okay, I'm Press playing it. Press W and I win. I am playing <laughs> I it now. Burn. Oh my gosh. I, I know what I'm playing tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys. Wait, 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 we also didn't talk about the previous patch before, so we should just mention the big hitters from that. There was the yeah, sports changes, there was the Hecarim changes, the Maokai changes. Obviously, the big uh, one, there's the Udyr. We did Uber. have an episode, actually, where we, we talked about these changes, by the way. Special. Did yeah, we? Yeah, it was a little special. Oh, yeah. You I, thought I, I thought I was the boomer. Nah. <laughs> no, <we are laughs> not bad, not bad. Woo! All good. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, there's also 12.16, too, because that's that's not playoffs. That that did happen. That's I thought Zeri that was the got... one you guys did. We did 12.17. Yeah. So okay. 12.16. My bad. 12.16 was uh, big Zeri nerfs. So massive gutting of her W damage and uh, point, what, five or point, I don't know, something off of her Q AD ratio. So she got pretty hard nerfed. She has a 41% win rate in solo <laughs> Q. So will we see her play still? I yes. actually think we will still. Yeah, I actually think yes, we, still we will. will. We're going to see a 41% win rate champion, <laughs> potentially still. I don't think she'll be pick ban, but I think for some teams, she's still going to be up there. She's going to be like first rotation kind of stuff. She might even see some bans. Like, God damn, dude, this champion cannot die. <laughs> so um, there's that. I do think Yumi did get nerfed. I enough. honestly can't even freaking tell if her nerfs did anything because they were pretty big nerfs. Like, she got her move speed and her E cooldown lowered, but I feel like she's just the same champion and she's still stupid broken. So I think we're still going to unfortunately see Yumi. Um, we will, especially with the nerf to Lulu. Like, Yeah, and then Lulu's getting actually some pretty sizable nerfs too. W cooldown nerf, uh, W polymer polymorph duration nerf. League Dad is sneezing or yawning or doing both. And almost, then we have almost sneeze yawn at the same time. You ever sn yawned? <laughs> sn yeah. uh, and then we have uh, the, the attack speed uh, nerf for, for whatever her face is. Stupid ass Lulu. Yeah. Um, stupid ass Lulu. Right. <laughs> stupid ass Lulu. So I just want to talk about Hecarim and Maokai. Yeah. Uh, since. Since we've did the patch review thing, preview thingy, uh, we, we they're getting uh, changed again, and they kind of like had more time to settle. So funnily enough, I've played a lot of Hecarim games. I've actually lost every single one of them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Even man. though the champion is supposedly broken, I actually have lost every single one. Uh, I think I played six of them. I did two Triforce, two Sunders, and two Chem Tanks. I tried. I tried all the builds. Right. I lost all of them. Uh, I think. I think. The both Sunder games were my best games. They were close, but we still lost. The other two games, though, dude, it was like I fell behind early. I got invaded or something happened, and I, it's just I couldn't do anything for the entire game. So I don't know what's up with that, but apparently the champion is broken, and he's getting <laughs> huge nerfs in 12.18. So that is interesting. His upfront burst is significantly lower. His initial E, W, Q combo auto that mo people most do, uh, pre-change Vecrim, is like it largely nerfed, right? His one-shot combo and everything is largely nerfed. But I think like the big thing is like he just doesn't die. He heals and then he continues to just do damage over time, over and over, and you can't peel him. So that's where I think he is strong. Um, I don't know how hard these nerfs are going to hit. It's hard to get a read on it because they are pretty big nerfs. So I don't actually know if we'll see Hecarim at Worlds anymore because these, these nerfs are sizable. <laughs> oh, and then Maokai is just not even playing the jungle. He's just a, a, a menace in the top lane. Actually unkillable. That champ is just unkillable in top lane. So, yeah, yeah, so anyway. apparently there's possible tech for Hecarim where you actually go Eclipse. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. I've heard I've I've heard some rumblings about that. Um though I can definitely tell you the champion is one hundred percent broken. Um mm -hmm. my team's jungler played uh twenty four games of Hecarim this weekend and won twenty one of them. What the yeah, hell, bro? Yeah. Okay, I guess so... I'm terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, champ's maybe, definitely busted. Maybe not yeah. the champion, but <laughs> just kidding. I, yeah, I, no, have to, I, I, I have to perma ban him uh, yeah. again, which sucks because whenever Hecarim's ever picked, I just ban him for the next month because I, out of all the champions in the game, I hate Hecarim might be number one. Yeah. Wow. Rough. No, not more than Yumi. Mmm. What? Because okay. at least Yumi I... players are bad. Okay. So like okay. It, it doesn't. You can, but Hecarim just like it doesn't. 
it doesn't matter as much if you're bad. It's because it, he's just harder to punish if you're bad. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, yeah, well, what I about? Uh, think, yeah. Go ahead. Hecarim is just, just kind of low counterplay, honestly. It's like well, exactly. if you're not if you're not a certain type of champion, you just can't do anything against Hecarim. <laughs> so I mean, Yumi is also kind of low counterplay, but like you can always just like. You, like there, there's some times where like you can't stat check and outplay Hecarim if he gets to a certain point or if you don't have the right champion. It's just like J4, right? It's like if you don't have the right champion, you just you just hate life. Um, yeah. Where Yumi's, it's like you know you can kind of just like get ahead and out outstat them so, at least in solo queue. Um, yeah. Right, go ahead. Okay. Well, what yeah. about uh, what about Callista? Uh, she is getting a base HP, oh, her so base HP reduced, but you know we've been seeing hundred percent presence at least in the LCS for such a long time with Callista. Um, does this take her at least you know from taking up a ban spot? No. It yeah, that means she might get it through. <laughs> sure. Well, I I think we'll I don't think she'll be hundred percent presence, especially because of something like an Ash buff and a Misfortune buff, because these are champs mm -hmm. who can actually like contest her in lane uh -huh. especially ash um i really hope we still get to see play uh on Callista because i mean who doesn't want to see that champion at worlds and it's not like she's a solo q menace or anything like that so i i really wish they had waited to they at least push this back a patch and especially because i mean she's losing losing i think it's 40 base hp right that's a lot. that's that's a lot especially on a champion who's like main strength is fighting early, forty HP. That's half Doran's blade. That's yeah. that's a lot. So, okay. it 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 is a lot. It is a massive nerf. She's actually gotten two huge nerfs in a row. She got a three base AD nerf and this forty HP nerf, base HP nerf. Uh, I still think a team, a lot of teams are still gonna play it because it just doesn't matter. Like teams have gotten so good at playing Callista. Like. It, even if it's a suboptimal, even if it's like you do have counter matchups like Ash and MF, even if it's a terrible just game for Callista, it, it's just her ulti and her ability to just like play lane well enough, even in bad matchups. It's too broken for pro play, I think. I yeah, think that, they need to rework her ult for sure because she's so broken in enchanter her ulti. metas. She's so broken in enchanter I... metas because like the enchanter peels Callista and then Callista peels the enchanter, so you can't dive on either of them. And then you change it, and then you you put your your spear on the engage, and then they have now you have two forms of engage. It's too flexible. Teams have actually just gotten really insane at min maxing uh, Callista stuff. Like I remember at MSI uh, G2, they played Callista when no one else was actually playing that much Callista, and honestly, they got dumpstered in lane. They fell so far behind, but they just had a Diana Yasuo, and they just kept chucking in Diana, and it was just too broken. They were too coordinated and too good on the pick, and it just started getting banned against them. And then, obviously, Callista took over all of Summer Split. Um, so, I, I think just teams are just really good at it, and they're going to, like, get dumpstered with it in scrims where things are a bit low, looser, and they're going to have a competitive bias, right? Like, we know Callista's going to get through some skin, scrims after this nerf, and then they're going to be like, oh, I still get dumpstered by Ruler, even though she's super nerfed. We have to ban this shit. <laughs> um, so I still think Callista is going to be very high prio, just because of that. Just because of the way pros work, right? The, the How their minds work and stuff. They're, they're going to keep banning it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other things on the patch? Uh, no? Yeah, I think we're going to see MF. We're going we're gonna to see some MF. Oh, she's, snap. She's going to be pretty good. I don't know if she's going to be blinded. But there's been times where MF has been blinded, and I've never felt it's right. So I don't know if we'll see that, but as counter picks, right, we're going to see it. I do think that, like, we're still going to see Sivir. So Sivir did get a small nerf, and her win rate actually took a, a, a solid hit. But I still think we're going to see a lot of Sivir. Um, let's see, Lucian, Nami. I don't Dead. think we're going to see it because of the interaction. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, at least maybe in the beginning of plans, right, we did see it. But, like, there's just a chance where, like, some team, like, throws a bunch of ADC bands, they still pick Lucianami, it does well, and it baits a bunch of the world's meta to just keep playing Lucianami, because like I said, even if it is nerfed, even if interactions get lowered, teams are so good at it, players are so good at it, and they're so stubborn, they don't want to learn new stuff, so I, I actually think we'll still see some Lucianami. We might see Lucian Lulu, I don't know, other stuff to pair with the Lucian, but I, I think we'll still maybe, maybe see it. Um, okay. Lastly, I mean, let's see, do, we, do I think we see Maokai? I honestly think we won't, but we should. Um, I think we will. He is. Yeah, I think we, we will see some. I don't think he's going to be a mainstay of the meta or anything. But it's kind of weird that like he got a bunch of jungle-oriented buffs. 
and he, he's actually not very good in the jungle at all. So this next patch that hasn't come out yet, 12.18, is changing those things around. They're going to make it more um, jungle-related uh, ch uh, changes. Uh, and then Udia rework is, I've heard, is not allowed at Worlds, so we don't have to worry about that. Because okay. if it was, that champion is super stupid. So at the beginning, I thought Udyr was not that good, but then I realized, yeah, he doesn't do that much damage, but he's literally unkillable. You can never run away from that idiot. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Udyr is disgusting. I, I just, so. whenever I see Udyr, I just play Aphelios into him, so... That's good for you. That is fun. Whenever I play Udyr against Udyr, I'm a jungler and I just cry, because I can never <laughs> 1v1 him. <laughs> There's no way to 1v1 in Udyr. There's no way to kill him. He doesn't kill you, but you can't run away from him, and then his team kills you. So, all right, I freaking hate Udia right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, any final thoughts on anything? Uh, I just want to say quickly that I thought the whole LCS ten production, you know, just with all the top of every position, top ten players of all time, you know, the legends walk out, seeing Dyrus cry again, and like, you know, like it's just it was a really just great production by, um, you know. The, the whole LCS production team. Uh, so kudos to them. I really enjoyed it. Um, it did this whole thing with the, with the arenas, you know, being back, hearing the noise. I just was a lot of nostalgia and I felt really good about uh, seeing the games in this type of atmosphere again. So kudos to them. Just wanted to throw that out there, but uh, any, any final thoughts for you guys? Yeah. Uh, in the stadium at in stadium fireworks, that was sick. Wow, like the whole that's stadium awesome. show, crazy. I don't know if the stream caught it, but there were like multiple at the at the end of the show. Uh, it was so sick. We did not expect it. We're like, oh, there's these things. These probably launched confetti. Then a firework came. We're like, what? Uh, so that was sick. And really quickly, if you are looking for elite content to watch over the next couple of days, Asia Star Challengers Invitational is going on right now. It's essentially mini worlds for only challenger teams in Asia. So the LPL challengers, uh, LCK, Japan, and uh, I think Taiwan. Are, are all just competing against each other. It's actually kind of sick. Um, I did watch the T1 Challenger team go up 19-1 to the V3 from Japan, I believe. So mm. a little sad to watch. That's but cool. yeah, you can see <laughs> nice. some like up and comers. You might see the next like Uzi or I guess Scala in the modern era. So that'll be nice. Cool all right. Well, I, I mean, there's if you want league content over the next few days, you should uh, go back and watch uh, League Dad's old videos. Oh, yeah. yeah true. From... Oh, yeah. Like 2015? 2015? Yeah. I played Vlad, I think, back then. How, how played... to play Swain support perfectly. Yo, <laughs> I get that recommended to me all the time. I do too. Yes! I do it's too. so funny. How in the world? That's awesome. I've watched literally... it. Algo works in mysterious ways. Algo way. works in mysterious ways. It's literally ways. on my homepage every single time. <laughs> I, um... I, I get recommended that one. I get recommended <laughs> that one where I play Samira with League Dead. Those yes, two, I, those, those are the two nice, I get recommended. Nice. Well, shoot, I, uh, should wa if you're okay. listening, you should watch that anyways. Shit. Yeah, yeah, come check them out. They're watch them. They're they're fun to watch. Uh, we might do some extra content, right? Usually we do a little break between here and Worlds, but who knows? Maybe we'll cook up some fun stuff. All right, at the risk of ruining Lead Dad's sleep schedule, I forgot. Steve and Team Liquid actually came out with a video talking oh, yeah. about how they're pretty much changing everything for next year uh, oh lord very block out another block out another three hours i could talk all night about this <laughs> all <laughs> right three hours. so so league dad what's the new team what, what's your new team for next year yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah that's right train, next man. Year. Tell me <laughs> the roster, at least. i yeah, know, we'll, we'll, I, I know. well and and but, oh okay so to couple that off real quick I, i'm sorry i cut you off but you were basically saying t you know steve was giving an update on on tl's direction but yes, to, to couple yes. with that i did see on reddit too that hansama i think got offered a contract at k to k corps yeah k corps so kmart yes kmart yes kmart can you give a tldr of that interview mitchell yeah, yeah, yeah. Really small TDLDR. They put a lot of money and resources into this team. They, he wanted to bring like just the best roster NA has ever seen to to get to Worlds in NA. It didn't work. So they have. So not only is funding and trust cut from just shareholders and everything behind the scene. Next year they are taking a different approach to building the team. Uh, there is going to be roster changes. They are going to have some people leaving, and they are going to have bringing up some younger talent. Yep. A lot of people are assuming it's Eon. Steve also had some funny wording where he said, we're going to double down on what has made TL great in the past. Whatever. Yeah. Don't so, tease me. 
Is that a little bit don't of a tease? <laughs> a little don't bit of a double lift nod? I don't know. Double lift. They haven't won a championship without him, right? What has made TL oh, great man. in the past? Is double lift? What did, word did he use? Oh, double. Was that intentional or not? So that's the Who whole idea. Who did he tweet and about? Check your DMs. That's right. Yeah, he did. To, to be fair, double lift did save that Oregon LCS. He did. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Multiple, in multiple ways. He saved them from being relegated and he turned them into a championship winning team. And he Four created times. like, he, he created like legacies for a lot of his teammates as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, the double lift did some real stuff there. I would love to have him back, but honestly, the biggest rumor is just that um, Hansama's gone, right? And then that Yeon is gonna come in and replace him. Yeah. Uh, everything else is up in the air. Santorin just come out with a thing. There was a rumor going around that Santorin was retiring, and Santorin tweeted himself, "No, I'm not retiring. I don't have any health or mental struggles right now. I'm here for next year to play." And uh, that's good to hear because, yeah, honestly, I said it last podcast. If TL gets rid of Santorin, like it was him and I think Berserker were literally the two most consistent players in all of LCS this year. Literally had solid performances almost every single game. Don't get rid of Santorin. That would be like getting rid of Xmithy all over again, man. Exactly. And mm. then freaking you go ninth place. <laughs> yeah. So don't do that. I think yeah. Santorin is very good. I, I don't. Think I, I think Bjergsen's. I think Bjergsen's going to re-retire. That that's my prediction. I yeah. One, I think Bjergsen is role swapping to support, and he's going to pull his Ven. I don't know. I just made that up, but that would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I expect Santorin and Core JJ are staying. I'm guessing they're probably going to keep Whippo, but I mean, obviously, I don't know what their budget's like. I think I think mid and AD is what they're looking at. The I I the... I think they should just go Palafox and Yeon. That's the... Yeah, there's all it is also a problem where they're all signed until 2024, except Corgi J, whose contract is up this year. So if you do want to make changes in every position but support, you have to do buyout stuff. You have to do contract breaks. You have to do all this stuff, which is much more expensive. Looks like they're already going to do it with Han Sama. So who knows, man? Maybe they break all the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. We've gone an hour and 47 minutes. Pretty good. I think that's a pretty oh, okay. good amount I of can content. Keep it going. I mean, keep you going. got us on that whole Steve <laughs> thing. I was about to just <laughs> lay into it. the liquid and... bit for when we were on time. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. now I have to think. I do really now have to think about what team I'm joining next year. <laughs> I'm open, guys. I'm open for it to be recruited. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks again to my awesome co host Kevin Mitchell and Alistair. Thank you all out there for listening. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. Let us know uh, if you have any questions or anything. But until next time, enjoy your climb on the rift. Try not to be too toxic, and we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace.